Yeah, but are EVs any better for the environment than a regular gas car? I am sure that you have heard that question a million times, whether it's from friends or from family or people at work you just like to argue with. So let's answer that question once and for all together. Are we doing something good for the environment or are we all just a bunch of idiots? Hey, I'm Evan with Gone Electric. I've got Ruby at my side right here. You can't really see her at the moment, but she'll probably pop up and start walking around, I'm sure. So the Pew Research Center released this survey uh, last year in August, and it indicates that 73% of people who buy an EV are doing so because they're trying to do something good for the environment. It's pretty noble. Um, that is the, the biggest reason that I bought an EV. Now, does that mean I'm noble? Yes. You know, there's lots of other reasons that I bought an EV, and on an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about all those things that went into my decision. But today I really want to focus on this question, whether EVs are actually better for the environment than a gas car or not. To help answer this question today, I've got the EPA's webpage up on my other screen. Now this webpage is dedicated to demystifying certain myths surrounding electric vehicle usage. So let's take a look. They've got six myths listed out on the front page here. I'm most interested in the first two myths because they're about climate change. Now today I'm just going to go over myth number one just to keep things relatively short, but stay tuned for video number two which will serve as part two where I discuss myth number two on this page. Now the first myth states that electric vehicles are worse for the environment than gasoline cars because of the power plant emissions. They rebut that with Electric vehicles typically have smaller carbon footprints than gasoline cars, even when counting for electricity used for charging. Now, if you scroll down here, you can actually click on this link here, Beyond Tailpipe Emissions Calculator, so that you can get a roundabout estimate of the greenhouse gas emissions that come specifically from your EV and how that stacks up compared to the average gas car in the US. So if we click on that, we come up to this page. Now, I have a 2022 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S. I live in the 90803 zip code out here in Southern California. If you plug this information for your personal EV, you can get a personalized uh, uh, response. But uh, this is what it is for the ID4 here. The graph that it produces is down here and on the y-axis, and uh, for those of you who hate graphs, I'm sorry. Anyways, on the y-axis of the graph that it produces, you've got greenhouse gas emissions as a function of carbon dioxide grams per mile. So on the x-axis, then you have your EV in your zip code, uh, as in you own your EV and you drive it in your current zip code where you live. Then you've got your EV if you lived in a location that uh, depended on the average source, the average electricity source. Um, different locations depend on different sources of electricity. Here in Southern California, we rely on sources of electricity that are a little bit more friendly in terms of emissions. Other parts of the country do not rely on electricity sources that are quite as friendly in terms of emissions. Uh, and then on the far right, you've got the average new gasoline vehicle greenhouse gas emissions. Now, the obvious takeaway here right away is if you compare the ID4 in this zip code to the average new gasoline vehicle, you're talking about a four to five fold difference in total greenhouse gas emissions. ID4 in this zip code is about 90 uh, grams per mile of carbon dioxide. The average new gasoline vehicle is 410 grams per mile of carbon dioxide production. So you've got between a four to five fold increase for a gasoline car compared to an ID4. Now again, this is greenhouse gases over uh, the lifetime of the car. That is uh, both from upstream sources during production of the car, manufacturing of the car and the, v uh, and the battery, um, and use of the car, actual driving of the car, operation of the car, which is tailpipe emissions. Now they square off the results here at the bottom in this little table. So again, 
ID4 comes out at about 90 grams per mile of carbon dioxide produced. Uh, that is, again, in my zip code, operating this car in my zip code, and it's a function of tailpipe emissions and upstream emissions, like I just spoke of a moment ago. Now, if the ID4 were in another part of the country, another part of the country that does not rely on as friendly an electricity uh, production source, it would be uh, it, it would produce a higher uh, greenhouse gas uh, greenhouse gas uh, greenhouse ga ga greenhouse gas. You know, I'm not going to edit that. I'm going to leave that in. It would pr produce a higher total greenhouse gas emission as a function of grams per mile of carbon dioxide. Uh, and then you can see here, right in front of your face, 410 for the average new gasoline uh, car. So big difference, right? So you can argue whatever way you want in terms of when those greenhouse gas emissions are produced, whether it's upstream in the beginning, like right? the production, the manufacturing of the car uh, versus driving operation, you know, the years that you actually are driving the car. But anyway, you, anyway you slice it, EVs produce a whole lot less total greenhouse gas emissions uh, than, than gasoline cars. Now, you can scroll down a little bit further and you can kind of learn a little bit more about sources of emissions um, from, from uh, the web page, and it's got some sources that you can go to. But essentially, uh, total greenhouse gas emissions um, are a function of upstream and tailpipe emissions. Now, upstream uh, tailpipe emissions, you know, if, if you if you want to learn more about it, you can click this link here and it will bring you to this, where it'll ask you what's the difference between tailpipe and upstream emissions. Well, tailpipe emissions, as I spoke of a moment ago, it's the carbon dioxide that's produced during the operation of the car. So the three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years that you have the car where you're driving, um, th that is tailpipe emissions. Upstream, <clears throat> excuse me, upstream emissions have to do with the greenhouse gases that are associated with the production and distribution of gas and electricity during manufacturing production of the car, as well as what might be associated with charging the vehicle. If you scroll down here, it'll tell you why your zip code matters, right? And so that would be over here. If you click that link, it'll bring you to this. So. I plugged in my zip code here a moment ago, and it showed me the fuel mix uh, that's used to generate electricity in my specific location here in Southern California. And it's over here, it's this bar here. And if you compare it to the national average in terms of fuel sources that are used to generate electricity, you can see, that, see here that in Southern California, the bar, the, the size of the bar is the same because it's a percentage, right? But if you start picking apart what makes up the fuel uh, source to generate electricity in California compared to the national average, you can see where things are different. Now, the bright orange is gas, right? So nationally speaking, you actually depend on a little bit less gas than here in California. Uh, the gray stands for coal. So in California, although we use more gas, we use a whole lot less coal. We also use a whole less, a whole lot less nuclear sources of energy for electricity. Uh, we, we use a little bit more hydroelectric. We depend on about the same amount of wind for electricity. Uh, we depend upon, upon about the same biomass for uh, electricity. Uh, and then here, solar, being here in California, we depend on a lot more solar than the average location in the US uh, to make electricity. The light pink uh, stands for geothermal. So we do use a lot more geothermal. And so owning the ID4 in Southern California is more advantageous for total greenhouse gas emissions over the lifetime of the car compared to other parts in the, the US because Basically, we rely on more solar and we rely a lot less on coal for uh, electricity. Now, scrolling down, you can uh, look a little bit closer at specific uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the nation as an average versus your select geographical area. And I, I want to focus on uh, this area because it's pretty interesting. So on the Y-axis, there goes those damn graphs again. On the y-axis, 
uh, measured in pounds per megawatt hour. You've got carbon dioxide, uh, you've got sulfur dioxide, and then nitrogen oxide. So I'm selecting carbon dioxide first. So California has a lot less carbon dioxide emissions uh, compared to the national average. If you look at sulfur dioxide, uh, a lot less even. And then nitrogen oxide, uh, less but not a whole lot less. We're working about, you know, 5% less than, that, than the national average. So again, you're seeing why your geographical location makes a difference in terms of total greenhouse gas emissions of your EV. Mm -hmm.